Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and forever. It's a beautiful gospel for today's solemnity taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, where our Lord tells us that God the Father hides and unhides things from people. God hides things from the wise and the learned. Verse 25 says, Wise in Greek there is sophos. It's where we get the word sophistry from or sophomore or sophisticated. Learned is sinetos. Sinetos in Greek means the intelligent. So God hides things from these people, Jesus says, from the sophisticated and the intelligent. And what he hides from them, he reveals to little ones, nepheos in Greek, literally infants or children or those who aren't yet of age. The general rule is the more sophisticated and intelligent you are, the more God hides things from you. That's the general rule, even basic truths, like the differences between men and women and the nature of human sexuality. Uh, we see nowadays how God hides even these basic truths from the sophisticated and the intelligent. It's not always the case, but that's the general rule that God hides these truths from them. So besides, uh, from, uh, apart from the basic truths about sexuality and biology, what else is God hiding and revealing? Very simply, he's hiding and revealing where all his treasures are. And they're all found in one place, in the sacred heart of Jesus. All of life's most beautiful and wonderful treasures are hidden there. And by the way, this game, uh, as St. Therese might call it, this game of hiding and unhiding things actually delights Jesus. It sounds a bit strange. Uh, you know, on the one hand, it frustrates us when people don't understand the basic truths of life or the things of the faith. But on the other hand, in a certain sense, uh, this hiding things from the wise and the learned actually delights Jesus. How can we say that? Because Jesus praises the Heavenly Father for doing things this way, which we heard in the Gospel. He said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. Matthew 11, verses 25 through 26. So we even catch the glimpse of a heart of a child in Jesus' own words, a child who delights in his father's game, we could call it, his hiding and his unhiding game. And I think only a child would actually call it a game. Uh, in Matthew 11, verse 29, Jesus then says this. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We we'll suggest to today that Jesus' yoke is his commandments and his cross. So it's two things together are the yoke of Jesus. And the irony or the paradox is that when you take up Jesus's cross, it actually gives you rest. It actually gives you rest. Peace and rest are found not in running from life's difficulties and crosses, but in, in embracing them with Jesus. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? You know, finding peace and rest and contentment in embracing the cross. The sophisticated and the intelligent can't understand these things. Why? Well, we know, we know the answer. Why? Because it's hidden from them. And what's hidden from you, obviously you can't see it, right? When we embrace Jesus' yoke, which is or are his commandments and his cross, then we learn all about and experience the love and the gentleness and the goodness and the compassion of the Sacred Heart. The Sacred Heart, which is meek and humble, Matthew eleven twenty nine. That's the opposite of being angry and prideful, being meek and humble. One other thing to note, uh, when Jesus' words in the Gospel about taking up his yoke and drawing near to him and finding rest, in him, they're all references actually which point to the Old Testament book of Sirach. In the book of Sirach, chapter 51, wisdom invites the humble to, quote, draw near to me, she says in verse 23, to, quote, put your neck under the yoke, verse 26, and, quote, to see with your eyes that I have labored little and found my, for myself much rest, says Sirach 51, verse 27. 
So Jesus is identifying himself with wisdom itself, wisdom personified. Even just a few verses before today's gospel, Jesus criticizes the generation of the sophisticated and the intelligent with these words. He says, for John the Baptist came neither eating or drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, Matthew 11, verses 18 and 19. So Jesus is saying that those from whom the things of God are hidden, he says those people, no matter how you approach them, they're still not going to get it. Basically, they still are not going to be open to God's message. But then Jesus adds this. He says, yet wisdom is justified by her deeds or by her children, according to some ancient manuscripts. Matthew 11, verse 19. So Jesus, who is wisdom itself, is proven right in what he says, not only by the good deeds that he does, but also he's proven right, he's vindicated by the witness of the little ones, by the children to whom the treasures of God are revealed. They all testify that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, verse 6. And where are all those treasures found again? They're found in the sacred heart, in the heart of wisdom itself. So let's ask Our Lady who gave Jesus his sacred humanity, let's ask her for the grace to love him with a heart like her own immaculate heart, so that the sacred heart of Jesus can be honored and adored as God desires. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and forever.